therefore, we have very little knowledge of the ancient language. And the question is as to whether we have any true key to the Atlantic language, to the language of the Atlantean people. We have no true key. I've seen in the last 35 or 40 years probably 50 examples of alleged Atlantean writing. Some of this resulting from psychic revelation, some of it from old and undeciphered inscriptions in remote places, uh, some speculative reconstructions based upon other languages, and a certain effort to arrive at what might be termed a mother language by combining all known forms. So this, however, has had somewhat the reverse action of Esperanto. It has become a kind of polyglot, which gives us no official security in believing that we have actually found their language. If we wish to assume that perhaps either in Egypt or among the Central American peoples, we have a comparatively complete descent of the old writings, then it is possible that the Atlanteans had a language somewhat similar or paralleling the Chinese or the Mayan or Egyptian glyphic forms. These were a highly specialized, highly flexible type of writing, not cramped as we would have think by pictorial limitation, but susceptible by certain markings of being transformed at any point into phonetic, uh, so that names, dates, and places could be inserted easily, and by certain rules, uh, a symbol could either be a letter, a word, or an incident or circumstance. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show. Uh, whether it's my show or Juan's show, we don't know. We're just we don't here. Give a fuck. I don't care. Juan doesn't care. We're here to. We're just here to chat it up. I, I missed uh, Big Daddy Juan over here, so I figured we'd chat it up tonight. Juan, what's going on, brother? Not much, dude. Just hanging out. You know, I forgot how much work a newborn is. It's like running on like zero sleep all the time. So, dude, I can't imagine. I don't have any kids, but uh, uh, I I hear my neighbor's kid crying through the wall. So you know, keeps me up either way. It's 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 stressful. You know, that's one thing I hated about living in an apartment, bro. I could hear my. I lived in an apartment one time, and I I would hear late at night the neighbor just just going to pound town, bro. Just like straight up porno style, like really, oh, yeah, bro. Like for real, I'm like, damn, son. Like save some for the rest of us, dude. Like you know what I mean? Like go easy so on was, her. Was he making more noises, or was the were, were, was his partner making no, more noises? Like was it like power coming, or was it like <laughs> you no? Know, like it was the chick. Phone. Okay, okay. But the the, well, the part was that you would see her in the hall. And mm. she wouldn't look like that. But I knew what was going on behind closed doors. You know what I mean? You knew she was a freak based on what you heard. But you look at her and you're like, oh, she's respectable. You know? She looked like a fucking nerd. But, bro, in the sheet, she's a freak in the sheets, bro. I was like, damn, she red- son. Was she a redhead? I don't remember what she was. She was like a brunette, I think. Okay. Well, yeah, dude, that's interesting about, you know, you never really know what people are into uh, until you, you get a little glimpse. And it, sometimes it kind of blows you away, you know? I know in college, you know, many of my uh, uh, endeavors, you know, it was just like, oh, I did not expect that. You know, what's that move? I, I don't think I can bend that way, you know, but they were into it and, uh, <laughs> you know, no one suspect, suspected a thing. I've also learned that the more autistic or like crazy someone seems, the the better they are. You know what I mean? Wait, what? <laughs> What the fuck are you saying, bro? I was I was dating this one chick. So at one point in college, I had three girlfriends, and they all knew about it, but they never addressed it to me or to each other. But they all knew. Everybody knew, you know. And I had them on like different days. I was a I was a scoundrel in college. I, I'm not proud of this. A little proud, but not proud, you know. And I had them like scheduled like Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Tuesday, Thursdays, and like weekends, you know. So like each one had their own schedule that they were on. But this one chick, I'm pretty sure she was like psychopathic. Like she was, she like journaled everything, but like how she journaled things was like in the form of poetry. And so, and she would like read me her, her poems and shit. And then we'd fuck and she was like an animal, but it, she was like super like, you know, like very Amish, like, you know, Mennonite, well tucked up and stuff like that. Not that she was, but that's just how she kind of dressed it, dressed and acted, you know, very quiet, very odd but i'm pretty sure she was a psychopath like she wanted to murder people she had plans to do so 
Uh, she was a freak. What the fuck are you on, bro? Like, well, I thought that's you. You asked, so I was just. <laughs> I was on a lot of drugs in college. That probably explains it. But, oh man. Uh, <laughs> anyway, what kind of drugs, bro? Let's talk about that. What kind of drugs? Because you're not okay. that much. You're the same age as I am, right? You're, what, 20... I'm 25. Oh, I'm 28. Okay. So. Yeah. So I I was uh I, I was a stoner in high school, stoner in college. Uh you know, drank in high school, drank in college, uh, did a shrooms like once or twice in college, but really I was like, just kind of taking like any pills that people would give me. I would, you know, do blow pretty much like there were many a night where I would take like generic Xanax and like go buy. Cause you could buy alcohol till four in the morning at gas stations where I went to college in Illinois. And so I would just get like super fucked up, go to the gas station, buy a 12 pack of beer and just like drive around and drink and like not even remember it. Like literally not going somewhere. I would just drive around and drink and I was fucked up on all kinds of, yeah, I was a wild, I was a wild dude, dude. And did you have your dad in your life or no? Uh, yeah, partially, you know, like I, I, he, my dad's kind of a, kind of an ass, but you know, I, I had a good stepdad who, who took care of me, <laughs> but that's a good question. You're right. Oh, because, I mean, we see it all the time, right? Because, I mean, people don't realize how important it is to have a father figure in especially a young man's life because they do give them that guidance. And usually all the fucked up people from throughout history, that's one thing that they have in common, that their fathers died either early on or they're absent. Like, look at Crowley, bro. His dad oh. died when he was, like, 13 or something like that. Yeah, well, and that, those are the formative years. And I'm not, I'm not saying, like, I'm a Aleister Crowley figure, but my dad was pretty absent growing up. You do have up. a fucking poster of what's his name in the back? Mr. For, Cosby. The greatest Mr. Cosby. <laughs> you still have that thing up, bro? Well, dude, I, it's like it's like a. I look at it as a, <laughs> you bring this up every time we talk. It's a historical piece of, of uh, you know, not art, but it's just like, you know, it's like historical. You know, I can't get rid of it because – it has historical value. I could probably take it down from the studio, but I don't know what I'd replace it with. Like maybe like a, a one-on-one poster or something. No, you could, I would literally, no, I don't want to say that. I was about to say, I would literally, literally rather you have like a Nazi memorabilia poster up, but I don't no, know which right. is worse. Maybe like a Hindu version of the swastika that then you can maybe just, well, it is it. Hindu. That's the original. Yeah. 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 Oh dude. So, um, yeah, so that's you know my dad was was absent, but I did have a good father figure and my stepfather. Uh, he he was a good dad. He took care of me, and I think what it was at the time is you know it was college, so I was just like going buck wild. I, I had some uh, really bad like breakup early on in in my college career that really fucked me up. I was very depressed, anxiety ridden, you know. So I just like numbed everything out, you know. But I'm good now. Yeah, I, I didn't have that phase in my life because I was really into church and I li I was raised by my grandmother, so I didn't really have that phase of, you know, going going to party. I mean, I did in high school when I after I had moved in with my dad, but I still wasn't never really interested me, dude. You know what I mm -hmm. mean? Like doing all that shit, and and I, I got I got sh like blacked out drunk one time. For my twenty first birthday, I don't I don't remember anything from that night. I just remember <laughs> throwing my like life up. I remember. Oh no no, I, I'm lying. I remember bits and pieces, right? So it started out good, and then I remember waking up in a bathtub. Mm. So no no, first it was, <laughs> I was I think about to shit my pants. So it was my girlfriend at the time, my stepbrother, and one more person. I don't even know who it was. They were sitting me on the toilet. And I just remember, like, not shitting. I was just farting. And then I blacked out again. They, I remember waking up in a, in, in a, in a hot tub, I guess. And not in a hot tub, but in a, in a you know, in a, in a tub. It was a hotel. We were in a hotel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like a jacuzzi-style tub. Jacuzzi-style yeah. tub. And then I remember looking down, seeing my penis, and then looking <laughs> up and seeing my stepbrother putting cold water on me because they thought I was dying from, like, alcohol poisoning. Oh, I was just, bro, I was just... Every, I was just taking shots and just you in a hot tub. <laughs> no, no, it was, it was, that's what I called it, but it was a tub, right? And it was, he, he put Water the cold, 
Okay, yeah. Yeah, he okay. put the cold water, and then they were putting it on me because they thought I was dying because I oh. was just blacked out drunk. But that's all I remember, and they're just throwing that's up. What- that's what we call a brownout, right? It's not a full blackout because if it was a full blackout, you wouldn't remember anything. You oh, browned wow. out. Yeah, you browned out. So, like, you, you remember bits and pieces. And, and from my experience, whether it's from drinking or from drugs or whatever, when you have those experiences, oftentimes you remember them, like, weeks later, you know, like uh, like in a dream or, you know, just, like, you know, casually just thinking, daydreaming or whatever. You Your, your experiences kind of come back to you. That's happened to me many times. Uh, I've been I've been dosed a couple of times. What? I actually so yeah, dude. Oh, I got I got drugged at a gay bar. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, so bro. I went to theater school, right? So like all my friends were gay or like super hot chicks, right? Yo, Kyle, that's kind of sus, bro. No, all your no. friends are gay. All my friends are gay. Take me to it. Was that one song? All my friends are dead, know. but instead of dead, they're gay. <laughs> all my friends are gay. They wanna fuck me. Um, but no, it was it was cool because like I was one of like a few straight guys in the in the program, so I like got tons of tons of pussy, right? Uh, so one night, a bunch of people wanted to go out to this gay bar because they didn't ID at this gay bar, and then you know, of course, we had some gay dudes and stuff, and a, a ton of chicks wanted to go. So I was like, well, yeah, I'll come along. It was me and a me and one other straight guy went with everybody else, and we were just out there looking, you know, hounding for puss. And so we went and it was across state lines. It was in Wisconsin and we were living in Illinois. So we go across state lines and uh, I don't even remember what it was called. It was some super, you could tell it was a gay bar. Like the name of it was like super gay. It was like the hang or something like that. Just super gay. And uh, we went and they had these like Long Island iced teas, like their famous drink, you know, and they were like blue. And I watched the bartender pour these drinks. I mean, it was like pure alcohol just all the way up, but delicious. So everybody got one, but I, what my my mistake was is I started drinking everybody's unfinished drinks, right? Mm. So I'm pretty sure what happened is one of the girls got her drink spiked, and I drank it, and so I I completely like blacked out. Uh, we went back to campus and we were gonna keep partying, right? But I was so fucked up. I was like, well, drop me off at my dorm. Let me grab my speaker, and then I'll come back out and we can hang out. So they're like, cool. So that I go to my room and I don't remember anything after that. Right. So the next day I go to the girl that I was supposed to hook hook up with that night. I went to her room to see like what the fuck happened. My best friend answered the door. I guess he had banged her (laughs) instead of me. And I was like, motherfucker. He was the one that drugged you, bro. Maybe. I wouldn't put it past him, you know. So then finally I – you know, I, I had no idea what happened. No one knew what happened. They told me that like they waited for me for like 20 minutes and I just never came out, but no, no one ever checked on me. So it wasn't until weeks later that I remember I went into my room and I didn't even think about going back out to go party. I like stripped down completely naked, took a shower, made some food and like, you know, turned on the TV and went to sleep. So like, but weeks later I remembered it. So uh, any kind of the, anytime you have one of those experiences, it usually comes back to you later on. It was crazy, dude. It was crazy. No, dude. Maybe you were abducted by some aliens, by some gay. Alien. But I got, I got a sound clip for you. Ready? Illuminati confirmed. <laughs> that's oh, our who's... gay Illuminati confirmed, bro. Is that Mark? No, that's <laughs> that's not Mark. That's S. B. Alger. He sent me that one time. It's fantastic because yeah. I have random people sometimes just send me Illuminati confirmed voice clips for whatever reason because it's like a like a staple of the show. So I'll like I literally just get random messages like Illuminati confirmed. I'm like, who the fuck are you? Like, <laughs> you like random people. So that's that, great. That was dude. one of no, them, and I put it on my soundboard. That's a that's like a, a signal of success is when people just send you random shit. You know. That's, so good not dick. I don't want dick pics though. Don't do that. Those are I'll send cool. you. I'll send you a voice message attached with a dick pic like underneath it so then you have to listen to the voice message but you'll see the dick pic on the way no <laughs> so. no fuck that bro don't do that shit not my dick someone say i'll find a dick and i'll send you'll it. find a dick so i think you were abducted by some aliens and that because missing time is part of the requisite like when people get abducted or whatever some of the some of the stuff that people say is like lost time unaccounted time yeah. But then you said you remembered it, which is kind of weird. What kind of drug yeah. would it 
B. I mean, probably roofie, like some sort of GHB, like roofie or something like that. Um, or or like I don't know, well, poppers. You have to sniff. So uh, you know, I, I associate poppers with the gay bar, but I didn't sniff anything weird that night. You know, I I kind of <laughs> wish I had been abducted by aliens because really I was just left with disappointment that my friends just kind of abandoned me and didn't like come check on me. Like I could have been dead or something. You know. Well, that's then, when you see who's actually there for you. You know what I mean? And you take oh, these experiences yeah. <laughs> too. Dude, to who learn. are you telling me? Like, I've been going through this thing lately. Like, I've kind of always dealt with it, you know, with like, I, I kind of I feel like I do too much sometimes, you know, for people um, without kind of expectation or, or whatever. But just maybe, I don't want to say taken advantage of, but kind of overly depended on sometimes. And like recently, like, I just feel like some of my friends – like my fiance was kind of felt the same way. She's like, we need to move. Like we need to get out of this town. Like, and I was like, yeah, like our, we love our friends and they're great, but like they kind of just like shit on us sometimes. Like they'll make plans with their friends to like hang out. But then whenever they want to hang out with us, it's always like last minute. Like they'll just come over and like hang out, which is fine. But it's like, well, you can't make plans with us. Or like today I, uh, I had a rough day today. I woke up at, super early to uh one of my buddies knocking on my door asking me to take him to the hospital uh because he was having uh suicidal thoughts and like a panic attack so i spent like five hours this morning at the hospital and like i'm glad he's okay i was happy to do it but i was just like what the fuck you know what i mean like (laughs) you have roommates you have uh you know people that you can call your mom or, or whatever it is and i was just like I, you know, I wouldn't do that to you, you know, I, not that because I don't trust you or I wouldn't depend on you, but it's like, I don't know, man. Sometimes I feel you, you're right. That night I realized who my friends were and there were none. They all just left me. <laughs> I mean, I'm still young and you're still young too. So it's not like we haven't lived, but I've always lived my life like pretty conservatively and I try not to depend. That's why it's the one on one because I can only, de- you know, you're born alone, you die alone now. You can have that inner circle. My inner circle is probably like one or two people that I truly can trust with my Mm -hmm. life. But then you have people who need to have somebody around at all times. That's why I feel like having a good partner is important because you can just count on them. They can be your best friend, not some fucking schmuck Mm -hmm. somewhere. You know what I mean? Mm Because would homeboy do the same thing for you? You know, because like that's how a lot of people are doing. Trust me. I've been burned a bunch of times by helping people from high school and I hated high school. I hated everybody there, dude. I hated my my entire high school experience just because people were so stupid. Like the the town that I'm in, like it was it just ugh. I just hated everybody. So when I graduated, I was like, you know what, uh, this is awesome. You know, just do my own thing. And what what state are you in again? I, I forget. I'm in te- I'm in Texas. You oh, always forget. Right. Yeah, like, I hit you-, you up and I was like, how far away are you from Jacksonville? <laughs> I was like, 14 hours, bud. I can be there tomorrow. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. I get the same thing. I grew up in a relatively small town, you know, and, every, you know, there's still people that still live there, still live at home. And, yeah, it's, you know, not that I didn't have good people, but, you know, some people are just a little more concerned with themselves. Not that I'm not looking out for me, but I was just raised, you know, when someone needs help, you help them. You know, and that's something I've been well, trying to work on, too. It's like one of those things where, you know, I'm trying to practice what I preach, right? So I'm trying to be more uh, more open, more loving, more that model of abundance type thing. And you learn a lot when you really try to implement that to, like what you said, like would the homie do the same thing for you? And I just, it's hard to just do it without expectation or without any sort of, uh, you know, I don't know what the word you is. You said but- it though right there, bro. Because I remember, yeah, I remember we, we talked about this, right? I think mm-hmm. you were like one of the nicest guys in the community as far as like being supportive and saying nice things, like words of affirmation and all this stuff, you know, no homo, but you have to know when to draw the line, bro. You know what I mean? Especially when helping other people, because you got to understand when someone is taking advantage because they know like, oh, you know, God, let's just go to Kyle's house and he'll just whatever, like you got to, you, you got to be able to distinguish that. You know what I mean? And, and just really. That's why I found it better when I give somebody like if I give somebody money, I don't let them borrow money. Like if I can give them a hundred bucks, two hundred bucks, whatever it is, because they need it for whatever reason, I tell them, "I'm giving you this. This is a gift." Because if I say I'm letting you borrow this, you need to pay me back, and then they don't pay me back, bro. I've stopped talking to people for X amount of money. You know what I mean? Because they took advantage of me. So 
after that, I, I remember it started with I, I helped a friend in high school from high school, one of my best friends. I helped him with getting a car. Mm-hmm. I, I had a lot at the time and I was like, you know what? Just here, take this, pay me back little by little, whatever. Dude needed a car. He was just about to have a kid. So I gave him a car. Homeboy ghosted me, never paid me for the car, never nothing. So ever since that, I was like, you probably wouldn't have done the same for me. I don't know anybody who would have, you know what I mean? So Mm -hmm. why am I bending over backwards for people if they're just Mm going to take advantage? So from then on there, like, if I can't help you or whatever, like, I just don't. And like, it sounds fucked up because like you said, you do need to help people because I do believe in karma. But Mm -hmm. you got to be able to distinguish who is out just to take advantage, you know? Well, and it's interesting you brought up com- karma. That shit, it comes back in unexpected ways, dude. Like, for example, so, like, I've been real stressed about money lately. Like, I'm I'm planning a wedding. I'm getting married, going on a honeymoon, all this stuff. And times are hard for everybody, right? I didn't get a raise at work. Uh, you know, groceries, gas, everything's super expensive. So I've been super stressed about money. And then I kind of just, like, a month or two ago, I kind of just said, fuck it. You know, I'll be fine. I've always been fine. I can make it work. You know, and I've just been trying to, you know, operate in that model of, and I hate to say model of abundance because it's kind of woo woo or whatever, but just like helping people out, having cookouts, inviting people over, you know, just trying to be there for people and, you know, be a good friend. And somehow money has just come my way, like randomly, like an opportunity came up to put in some extra work, albeit, but to make a good amount of money, which was like super helpful. I'm like, sweet. That's what I've been working, like welding outside. That's what I was telling you about earlier. I'm, getting some extra money for that and then last night i checked the mail and there's a there's a letter for me and i'm like for what the fuck is this it's like in a weird envelope and i was like what the fuck and it was from a, a class action lawsuit from facebook from like a year and a half almost two years ago that i i opted into and it was like four or five hundred bucks really that, yeah <laughs> like you, you remember when facebook like let's say you and i took a picture together and it would automatically like tag you in the photo, mm-hmm. whether I tagged you or not. So that was like super illegal. Like they were using your biometric data to sell your data, to tag you in pictures and stuff without you opting into that. So they got sued into oblivion. If I, That's the biggest money I've ever gotten from a class action lawsuit. Like normally I get like 50, 60 bucks or whatever. Um, so they must have gotten sued into oblivion, like a couple bill, maybe, you know, multiple billions oh, of dollars. They got, they, to get four hundred. Yeah, this guy in fines of like five billion dollars, but that ain't shit to them, you know. Yeah, exactly. So I was like, "Oh shit!" Like this is money I was not expecting. You know what I mean? So, uh, you know, th- you you mentioned karma, and that sh- that shit comes back in weird ways, you know. And the, but it's hard to get through that that time when you're kind of feeling downtrodden or or whatever, you know. Um, but you just got to keep pushing through, and you know, it's it's made my life. I, I'll I'll say in the last few months significantly better. Not that I don't still experience fear or worry or doubt, but it's just been a little bit, a little easier. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think, dude, honestly, like if I, if I was to tell you that I've survived the last 12 years of my life like that, practicing that model, I don't know if you'd believe me or not, because it always seems like that there's always somebody watching out for me. And not be, and, and like I said, I help people out. Don't get me wrong. Like I help people out. I just, you learn to distinguish when somebody is out to take it. That's why I said you have to learn when people are like, okay, you know, this is enough. You know what I mean? Like I helped you out, whatever. And I think that's what has really, and it's weird to say like blessed, right? Because that's pretty much what it is. And that's why I believe like, I think that the universe is God, you know, like the universe and just the 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 homeostatic, uh, you know the homeo homeo uh damn, homeostasis right? That's how you say it. Yeah, like the you know homeostasis. Stasis. Have you seen that, <laughs> that movie Biodome? No, no, I haven't. <laughs> I'll send you that a link to that. That's a great movie. So you know <laughs> you know because I, I believe that the universe needs to have some sort of order, right? <laughs> and yeah. it'll weed out you know whatever's not needed, et cetera, et cetera. So I feel like I've been able to benefit the world knows when somebody's doing their part. Like, you know what I mean? Like, like from your aura and all that shit, if you're a piece of shit human being, you might not get your karma right now, but later down the road, you know, how you you said, when you least expect it, 20, 30, 
40 years from now, you might, you know, die a horrible death for, you know, it's going to come back around. You know what I mean? So always does. I've always do like every single time because running a business, you can't count on anybody but yourself. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like it's, it's, on, it's yeah. on you. Like if, if you don't can't pay the bills, it's on you. So I've always, I've lived the last like 12 years of my life with that uncertainty of like, what's going to happen tomorrow in my, in my business. Cause it's just like really cutthroat and the trucking business really cutthroat. Cause I mean, everybody oh, yeah. just undercuts everybody else, but every single time I don't know what's going to happen, it just like happens. Like it's a, the weirdest oh. fucking thing. Like it's like, Oh, you know, we needed X amount of work. Well, here it is. Like, Oh, well, mm-hmm. I didn't even like, and then I always think I'm like, what if I wouldn't have had that come up? What would I, what would I have done then? Like mm-hmm. I would have been fucked. So yeah. it's like, and dude, I can't complain. You know what I mean? Like I got my stuff. I got, you know, I have a roof over my head, you know, my family's fed all that shit. So I think it's great, but it's just keeping that mindset of positive, like positivity, bro. It's like the craziest. It's- I can't even explain it. No, it, you you did a good job, but but it, it's hard too. It's not easy, and when you, I feel for example, like I feel like when I try to put something out there, you know, like I, or I try to like make something happen for to solve a problem or whatever, usually bites me in the ass, you know. But if I kind of just let it let it be, not worried about not worry about it, take care of my responsibilities, you know that. It's that whole mind, that whole trope of like, you know, write down a list of all the things that are bothering you and then cross out everything that's out of your control, you know, and just focus on the things that you can control and everything else will kind of work itself out. But that's so hard for people. I think especially for our generation, you know, we're kind of in between two generations. So we're kind of bombarded with both sides of, you know, like, oh, just, you know, work hard, pull yourself up by your bootstraps, but also like, you know, the world's ending economic collapse, you know, that kind of stuff. (laughs) And so it's like, we're us in this age of like, you know, 25 to 30, we're kind of in this weird place where our parents have a different mindset, but then like the people we hang out with have a different mindset. So it's, it's, it's really hard and it's, uh, it's not easy, but it's been good so far. And this, I'm new on this journey as far as, uh, practicing that and it is a practice like you're gonna fuck up you're gonna make mistakes you're gonna burn people but it's like you know so for example i had a i had a uh, my best friend in high school uh actually moved in with me senior year like he had a terrible family life and he was like hey man i need like a, a place to stay for like a couple of days while i figure shit out and you know i was like okay well come stay with me you know my parents love you it's all good he never left, but right. Like yeah, I consider those him, are the I, worst, bro. I no, it was like, I consider him my brother. Like he was part of the family, you know, he got into college. Like he was, he was my brother. And then recently, uh, he got, he got sober and you know, I was there for him. I was helping him out, you know, working him through all that stuff. And then everything was cool and he was really getting his life on track. And then he got a girl, he met a girl. And then just completely stopped talking to me and the family, like, and then started to blame us for all of his problems, you know, and I'm sure he sees it differently, but it was like, dude, I've been there for you through so much, like suicide attempts, you know, your alcoholism, all these, like you treated me like shit because you were drunk, all this stuff. And now he just doesn't talk to us. And it's like, you know, and, and it was harder for me. It was hard for my family, but my mom just reminded me that like, you know, people come into your life for a reason and when they leave, it's for a reason too. Like you can't just hold up. Like I, I think about this every day. Like what, what did I do wrong with, with this, with this guy who was my best friend and my brother. And now we don't talk. Like if I saw him, I'd probably punch him in the fucking face because of how he treated, you know, my, my family and, and me. And it's like, I, so you got to kind of, you know, it's like, and I hate to bring up the Bible, but it's like, you know, there's a season for everything, right? There's a season for growth. There's a season for harvest. There's a season for pain. There's a season for joy. And, you know, life is full of those transitions and you got to just go with it. You know what I mean? Like there's some hard times ahead. I'm sure for, for a lot of people, probably for me, probably for you, but that's just part of it. And we just got to keep rocking with it and keep, uh, you know, damn, we got really philosophical, didn't we? Yeah. Are you going to put this out, bro? This is like a therapy hour. 
Oh, it's okay. Well, you you started asking me questions like, were you raped or like uh, abducted by aliens? You well, know? you kind of kept talking about aliens, and here you are, like getting all, you know, the people who have fucking these traitors in my life, and you're just going, I'm just letting you do your thing, bro. You know. <laughs> oh, it's great. Well, speaking of traitors, my shirt says American until Texas secedes. <laughs> But uh, but yeah. So uh, what's going on with uh, with aliens, dude? Are you, you, did you hear about that um, that uh, the congressional hearing that was kind of like a a nothing burger, like nothing? It was like, oh, we're gonna get some information, and it was awful. Like these guys that? are. Like, it was like last Tuesday or something. It was like a Senate hearing on an intellig- intelligence hearing that was open to the public, and they were interviewing like defense people, DOD, you know, all these kind of people about you know what's going on with the ufo phenomenon and th- what got me the bi- the most was that these guys who allegedly work in the defense department were using like windows vista to like show the videos and stuff <laughs> <laughs> and they couldn't like slow them down they were grainy they couldn't they'd be like in this video a ufo flies right by a f-16 pilot but it's so fast that you don't even see it and it's like you guys couldn't even slow this down a little bit to like show what what the object is or what what's going on and the, you know they're just scrubbing videos like you can see their mouse clicking and like dragging back and forth and shit it's like dude either our government is is completely incompetent or they really don't want us to know what what they're actually capable of how dude when are you going to learn Kyle like we can't depend on the government to show you remember i remember growing up right because like the, the the thing that really got me into like the conspiracy i mean i had always been a kind of the kind of kid to question things and i was super into aliens and bigfoot and all this stuff and you remember watching like discovery channel or the history channel and it was like oh look at this documentary on bigfoot i'm like Damn, on this one, they're really going to show us a Bigfoot. And then before the commercial break, they'll be like, yo, what was that? And you see them like running like, oh, shit. And then when we come back, yeah, like when we come back, I was like, oh, when they come back, they're going to show us the Bigfoot. Like, what was that one show, dude, with the buried treasure at that stupid Skull Island that went on for like 17,000 seasons? I don't know. The Oak, the treasure of Oak Island or some shit. Yeah, that's a relatively new one. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, yeah. that thing it was like on the next episode, they, you know, bust into like this. I was like, oh, on this season, they're gonna they're gonna get this treasure. And it was like 12 seasons later. I was like, man, fuck this. So the I see the government as the same thing. Like, they're not gonna the mainstream media isn't gonna show you the esoteric secrets of all that. Like, you know, when I'm on the internet, I look at Wiki as like the tip of the iceberg. Wikipedia doesn't tell you the shit that you want to know about, you know what I mean? You got to dig deeper. You got to find the books The you know, it's like, here's Paracelsus uh, page on wiki. It's like, Oh yeah, he was, you know, this famous toxic, you know, toxicology and all this stuff. Doesn't say anything about the homunculus. Like none of that shit. You got to go digging deep for that. Cause you know what I mean? You're not going to find it just on the superficial stuff that they, they're just going to show, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's just kind of like to drag you on to keep you guessing, you know? And- yeah. So the media is just like that, bro. They, we know, like, you know, you, you've seen Joe Rogan where he, I, I'll see him like posting like, oh, they just admitted that, that UFOs are real and nobody's batting an eye. I'm like, we know that they're real, but yeah. me, I'm like, show me the gray in front of me to shake my hand and mm-hmm. I'll be like, all right. I'm sold a thousand percent. Like this is a hundred percent real. Like, you know, I've never had an experience. The only paranormal experience that I've had is sleep paralysis. And that's it. Like that's the only paranormal. And one time I saw like a gray for like a split second, like the day before I went to Coral Castle, it looked like a gray, like that's, but I was watching scary movies before going to sleep. So I don't know if it was, you know, just a fig, you know how, you know how, when you look at, when you when you when you're in a dark room and you look at that pile of clothes in the corner and it looks like a it starts to morph oh, like a person you know yeah fuck that <laughs> fuck that dude. that's why like I'm so glad I I have my fiance and my my future wife because like she does the laundry you know she puts that shit away so like I don't have to worry about that shit at night you know like she won't go to bed until the laundry's put up you know so <laughs> uh but that is a good point as far as like. Uh, you know, that that definitive proof. So, and this might be a little insensitive, right? But, 
you know how there, there was that in the news, there's that shooting in Texas, right? With like all those kids and stuff, like kind of like Sandy Hook 2.0. Right. And, and my, and everyone's Texas, arguing, right? Yeah. Everyone's arguing like, is it the guns? Is it mental health? And I was like, my only comment was show me the dead kids, Ooh. you know, like, well, cause not that I'm not, not insensitive to it. Like I, I, not that I don't care, but it's like, we've been lied to before about this kind of shit. You were just saying how YouTube's taking down your videos. Well, they're going to take this one down because of that. Cause you just said that shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's on them, you know? So but it's like, show me the, show me the proof or the, you know, you know, it's it's there's so much that that we know we've been lied to about. For example, like my mom recently, like a couple months ago, was like, "I think I'm gonna send some money to like the Ukrainians and stuff." Like, I feel really bad for like the kids and stuff. And I was like, "Mom, you're you, you're old enough to know that we were lied into many wars before before now." And she's like, "Yeah, I know, but like the kids and stuff." And I was like, "Mom, until they show you the dead kids." Don't send any money. Like it's not. What the fuck, bro. Well, and I don't mean it like in like a bad way, but it's like they're lying to you to elicit an emotional response to get you to either give money or give consent or whatever it is. So it's like, just stop. You know, like I, I I'm at a point where not that I don't care, but it's like I'm not buying it. You know, mm-hmm. like like with the aliens, show me the gray that comes into this room right mm-hmm. now, shakes my hand and probes my butt. That's why then I dress I'll- up as one, bro. Do you, are you trying to like conjure? Are you trying to like chant? Like chant? Are you hoping that they'll recognize you and be like, "Oh, he's one of us"? You no. Know? So, you know, I think that a lot of these things are projections. I believe in elementals and all these these. I, I you know, the mind is a more powerful thing that they're than they're letting us on to believe. <laughs> yeah. to, to you know what I mean? Like the the mind is powerful. That's why, right? I did a show with Deplorable Janet where it was like, it was just fear oh. porn, fear porn, fear porn, fear porn. Janet's the best, dude. Like, if I didn't have a mom, I would want Janet to be my mom. <laughs> Shout out to Janet. <laughs> so, you know, they, they want to keep you suppressed. They want to keep you in this negative mindset to, you know, keep you down, keep you stressed. You know, gas prices are going up. You know, uh, there's they no 25 cents today here in Texas. Dude. 25 I was at five cents. I was at the gas station buying beer. It was like three ninety six, which is probably cheaper than most of the country. Yeah, and is. then I, literally as I'm checking out buying beer, the attendants like typing in the numbers and he looks at me like we're homies, you know, and he's like, gas prices just went up. And I was like, I looked out the window, saw four twenty, and I was like, you motherfucker. Hey, he was like, oh, hey. I was like, <laughs> I didn't even. Yeah, it's like I've never seen. It. Yeah, so I, I didn't mean to cut you off, but yeah, good point. So, what was I saying? I About they want to keep us down. Oh with- yeah, so they want to keep us down, right? Because they understand that if we come together as a collective, you know, like the mo- the the money system, dude. If you really break it down to its core, it's ruled by one thing, like one crucial part of the alchemical process. Is it leaving alchemy out of the whole fucking spiel because that's also part of it, magic. But no, the, the one thing that's part of the entire system for it to work and for it to continue working is faith. Faith that this piece of paper, this script, the simulacra will have value tomorrow. Because they literally made value out of nothing and then they compounded it and just kept building on top of that and building on top of that. But it's backed by nothing. They can print as much of it as they want. And it's just monopoly money for no well, fucking even, reason. They don't even, excuse me, they don't even have to physically print it. They can just enter in some zeros on the computer and it's there, you know. They don't even have to physically print it. They can just fudge with the numbers Mm -hmm. on the spreadsheet you know yeah but the point being is that people blindly follow this shit so once once you're and you need to read the crowd by gustav Le Bon, which is a very crucial book unfortunately it is like a manual on how to control big groups of people but this book the crowd crowd by gustav Le Bon, he is the father of of crowd psychology and this book was used by hitler mussolini like L A L E B A N L L E B O N. I did some act when I was in acting school. One of our methods was Le Bon. 
Interesting. I'll have to see if it's the same guy. Well, he was a he was a, a social psychologist. So I don't know Gustave, but he was a French guy. Oh shit. Anyways, read this. But it's a it's a it's a paper, and it's like three separate books or something like that. It's a study, and when you read that, it shows how ideas are given to to crowds, and and a crowd and a psychological crowd can be a nation, can be a community, can be a hundred a hundred people in a group. Mm-hmm. It can be ten thousand people in a group. Like the the concept is still the same. It just the the scale of it just varies, but. Point being that people take these ideas given to us by the elites, the reptilians, the archons, whoever, and then they're trickled down to the people. And that's how you get the riots of like BLM, Antifa, and all this shit where you see people almost like in a demonic state that takes over them and they start like acting barbaric. Because Carl Jung even talked about that where this barbaric, uh, this barbaric thing that's within our being doesn't manifest itself until we're in a crowd. Because it mm-hmm. does something to the psyche. So the crowd becomes its own living organism. And the crowd is only as smart as the stupidest person in that crowd. Okay. So, and the idea is that they're, because dude, you see it. Like when they were, when they were interviewing people in these crowds, like, oh, what are you here for? Oh, I don't even know. Dude. I'm just here. I'm, I'm part of the whatever. About. It's like, wait, so you're fighting for a cause that you don't even know who the fuck, you know, either George Floyd or whoever the fuck else it was. Like you don't even know who he was, but yet you're <laughs> here. It's like, yeah, I'm just, you know, I just want to burn shit. I just want to fuck things up. You know what I mean? So, or it's like, um, you know, this is the right thing to do. That's why I'm here. You know, like it's like a moral. Yeah. But do either you, they're there to cause chaos, chaos, or they truly feel that they're, you know, morally justified in 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 whatever they're participating in, regardless of what the implications are. Yeah, and then they, what are they saying in the media? Oh, peaceful protest. No, it was peaceful. There was there was uh, only a couple people causing disruptions. And the January sixth, oh, the insurrection. This is because, dude, they it's this polarization of like either the left or the right, and they just swing you back and forth. So you don't even know how to make up your mind. Now, if you're like me, you just sit back, and it's one thing to know that you're in a game versus when you don't know you're in a game. So there's people who take themselves way too fucking seriously. And I think that's also added to my success in life where I give just enough of a fuck. Like I give just enough of a fuck to make it, you know, to make a difference. It's not like I go balls deep into like whatever problem I'm having. Like, you know, my dad had a heart attack two years ago now, I think. And that was one of his things. I'm like, dude, you get worked up for no fucking reason, dude. Mm -hmm. Just relax. You know what I mean? Like how you said the stoic mindset where you can only control things that you can truly control because the Stoics were like, hey, I can't control it. Well, fuck them. Then I'll just go with the flow. Like that was mm-hmm. the stoic mindset. Now, they understood that the logos, the universe was this force that it was going to do whatever it wanted to do, regardless of how you felt about it. So what do you do? You just roll with the punch. What does Bruce Lee say? You know, be like water or whatever the fuck. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, use Use your opponent's energy against them don't try to resist but redirect or absorb or you know you can't you can't try to uh resistance just the 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 physical force of resistance is is a stressor it's a strain yes it's a it's a negative force you know not that you can't resist things that are happening to you negative things but you know if you can't if it's a larger force than what you're capable of that you're trying to resist you can't, you know, that's, uh, this might be a, a bad example, but, you know, it's like, uh, like George Washington, right, in the, in the Revolutionary War. He didn't go balls to the wall, like balls deep at the British, right? He kind of let them fuck up and make mistakes. And, and when he made a mistake, he, he, he would retreat. He was like, oh, this is a bad idea. I'm out. You know, he didn't, he kind of just would go with the flow of things and, kind of take advantages uh, and that's many generals throughout history have kind of have won wars in that kind of guerrilla mindset of just like here's what we can do here's what we can control we obviously we're outnumbered we're outgunned what can we do and if you apply that to your relationships your job or whatever you can really maybe not solve all your problems but at least not be as stressed about things right Mm -hmm. yeah and that's that's what i that's how I've been able to survive as long as I have just not stress, not letting it get to, you you know what I mean? Like, yeah, you're going to make mistakes, 
yeah, it's good to think about those mistakes and what you could do, but make sure to always know what not to do for the next time. You know what I mean? Like, don't, oh, you know, I fucked up. Yeah, this fucking sucks. I fucked up. You know, and just keep pondering on it. Like, yeah, I mean, I shouldn't have done that. Like, oh, oh, I'm so down, man. I must like, okay, dude, we get it. You messed up. Now, what can we do to correct it for the next time so it doesn't happen? You know, instead of yeah. lingering on it, like, oh, man, I should. Like, no, dude, shut the fuck up. You already, it already happened. You can't change whatever it was. You, yeah. You can't. So just move on. And I mean, I've, dude, honestly, that's how I've been just chilling. And I'm good. And I think that's how I'm going to continue to be for yeah, the rest of my life. Probably- you've had great success when it comes to i'm sure I, just based on how you talk your your business is, is successful your family and your relationships are successful and, and your 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 podcast is successful because you just kind of let things happen you know and you you see opportunities you you jump on them if it's right for you you know and and that's your just your vi- your general vibe of just like yeah whatever kind of go with the flow it it works dude and people like that and they want to listen to it they want to learn more about it which is that's why I, I like you and I like your show because I, I feel like I can learn something from you. Not that I don't already know, but to see it in practice is a different thing, you know, just how you kind of approach things. And I'm not trying to like toot your horn, toot, toot your horn or, or, or blow you or whatever, but it's like it, it really is something that – and I'm sure having kids helps with that because it's like, you know, uh, fuck, I can't uh, – this is stressful, you know. What can I do to change it? It's like just let them cry, you know. Let them cry. Give, do what you can and – uh, I'm sure that pushes you to your limits, right? So you kind of know where your limits at, and then you can kind of gauge the rest of your experiences uh, going forward off of like what's really pushed you, you know? Oh, kids are a trip, bro. Like my son right now, he's at the age where he will exhaust the question until it's not until it's like at the at, at its final form. So it's like. Oh, well, you know, what's that? And you tell him what that is. Like, oh, well, what is that? And then, like, you tell him what that is. And then it's like, oh, well, what is that? Until you can't break it down anymore. <laughs> and I look at life like that where if you're able to, especially when it comes to, like, all this information, if you're able to break it down to explain it to a four-year-old or a three-year-old, then I think you're doing pretty good. Because, like, some people do, like – especially like on our show Illuminati confirm where we have these guests sometimes that are just like, you know, not to... so wild people on there, dude. Well, there are some people who, how you said they do too much, you know, not to disrespect anybody, but you do, if you're doing too much, you know, just tone it down because the regular layman person isn't with all the intricacies and all this shit. And you know what I mean? Like they just, and that's like one of the things that I love about Manly P hall because he's able to take these complex ideas that were esoteric, that were occult, right? That were in secret societies and all that shit. He's able to break it down for the regular dumbass like me. I'm a dumbass to understand it and like digest it. You know what I mean? And that's really, if somebody's able to get you right off the bat, I think that's like so crucial. You know what I mean? Like when you, it's, it's good to be smart. It's good to use all these big words, but how many people really are on that intellectual level as you, you know what I mean? And when it's not even an intellectual level sometimes, you know, cause you can be, you can be smart in different ways, you know, like book smart versus street smart, you know, like I, I try to think of myself as street smart. Like I, I'm just a bad reader. Like I'm slow at reading. I have a hard time processing it, but like I can listen to things. I can talk to people and I can, I can gather, uh, you know, and I, ha- I know how to navigate, you know, conversations with people one-on-one or in a group or whatever. And, and that's kind of like my strong suit. So I kind of lean into that, right? Like I know that if I want to get some deep research with like some deep dives, I know who to go to for that. Right. I know what podcasts or what researchers or whatever to uh, get that information. But if I just want to like get a gist of something or have something broken down where I I can tell my, you, you meant, you said like a four-year-old, but I think of it as like, my mom, who's not into this shit, right? She listens like, to your show, right? <laughs> yeah, she listens to my show. So I try to break things down so, like, she gets it, right? And it's really woken her up to a lot of bullshit. She's, like, super based now because she listens to my show, and she's like, oh, my God, this is so fucked up. Granted, she still watches Fox News and stuff like that, but, you know, she's getting there. So it's and not that she's dumb. My mom is not dumb at all. 
she but she's it's a different kind of intellect and it's just a uh, how you process information you know like i love what you and uh, uh uh paranoid american are doing with uh you know the book club because y'all are taking things that fuck those are some heavy duty books like heavy lifting that you guys are doing but you're breaking it down in a way that people like me who are are, are not great readers or fast readers i can i can take books like that i mean like manly p hall or, or these illuminati books and uh understand what it's all about you know not that it it i shouldn't go read it at some point but it's like oh okay i know what's going on now you know well i can't even tell you how many times i've read something over like the the last occult book club that we did which was uh the anesthetic revelation it was about this i haven't put it out yet it's about this guy benjamin paul blood and he's super obscure like super esoteric like this he's not even there. once we put this podcast out it'll probably be the only video on youtube about this guy and what he was doing is that he was doing a shit like back then they would do a shitload of nitrous so homeboy was doing it just fuck loads of nitrous just a bunch of like nitrous balloons or right out of the tank or right something. out of the bro right out of the tank just 100 percent nitrous getting high as fuck and he would either black out or whenever he would come to, he said that he would understand like any philosophical problem or work. It would like come to him. So he was writing this book and he wrote this, this pamphlet and then he wrote a book 40 years after, right? After studying the revelations that he was having on, on the anesthetic, the, the, the nitrous, mm. but bro, reading through that pamphlet, from the from 18, 19 something, 18 something, bro, was one of the hardest things I've ever fucking done. What's it called again? The Anesthetic Revelation, Pen, uh, Benjamin Paul Blood. And it's going to be the Occult Book Club number five, which is not out yet, but number five or six. And is that the book or the pamphlet? No, the pamphlet is the, the Anesthetic Revelation. Okay. Just curious you're gonna read it and it's gonna make fucking zero sense to you like a hundred percent because i didn't even understand i i had such a hard time getting through it it's only like 50 something pages and it took me forever to read through it because it was this dude highest blasted out of his out of his fucking mind on nitrous writing philosophical shit and he was just on some next level like thinking about the fabric of reality just high as fuck and just breaking things down. And you're like, who, who comes up with this sort of stuff? You know what I mean? Like, he's like, when you look into a mirror on the other side of the mirror, is that another world? Like, is that, is that a, re, is that a reality in itself? Like that, the other, like you see it, it's got all the qualities that you see in yourself when you're looking at it. But you know what I mean? Is it another reality? What's looking back at you, right? Exactly. You know, when you stare into the abyss, the abyss looks back, you know, it's kind of like the, like the DMT diaries, right? I, have you ever watched that documentary, the DMT, the Spirit Molecule? I think it was a book, and they made a documentary about they it. They made a doc. I, I've I have the book. I've never read it. I've only read like maybe the first few pages. But I, it's Rick Straussman. I know who it is. Of yeah. The DMT monitor, but I've never. I didn't know that they had a doc. I'm gonna write that down. Yeah, it's on it's on Netflix, I believe, or YouTube. And basically, it was about those clinical trials with with DMT, where basically they would give these volunteers DMT, but they would put uh, what's the inhibitor uh, that lets you process dmt like pure purely or, or or efficiently they had that uh the inhibitor on a drip right so these uh, patients would just they they would be dosed up with tons of dmt but they wouldn't be able to process it without this inhibitor so they would just start you know on a drip just pressing that button getting it and it's on an iv right so they're mm -hmm. fucking going i mean blasting off for you know not hours but you know many many minutes and just their their accounts of it almost every subject had a very similar account to things you know like uh i was in another world i i they, i met god all these things and it's kind of you know if that that uh you said uh paul blood you know perhaps he was you know it might sound like the ramblings of a madman but unless you well, experience yeah. that, it might uh, it, it it maybe that's really what he, you know. If everyone kind of had that experience, that might be we all might have a similar kind of explanation for things. Whereas, like with mushrooms, people might have similar experiences, but it's very personal, right? 
you know, you kind of learn something about yourself. You, you know, kind of, you, you basically break down your, your, uh, your tendencies, your personality, your ego, and you kind of analyze it. Uh, what, whereas everyone might have that kind of experience. It's a very personal, whereas some of these other drugs like nitrous, fuck my dad used to tell me about how he'd go to like kid rock concerts back in the day. And on in the parking lot, dudes would just be, you know, have a, their hatchback van open with a tank of nitrous and they'd sell, you know, those big balloons for like five bucks a pop, you know, and people would just grab a balloon and fucking inhale it on the way to the mm-hmm. concert where they walked in, you know, because then well, you just throw the balloon away. You're all good to go. You know, that was one of the things that he says in it. Like, he's like, I can't even describe how it is because it's only like a slim window, but you only understand it once you do it and like that was like one of his main things like i can't describe what um what i'm experiencing and then he had some people write into him that were reading like his his pamphlet or his book or some shit and then like this guy was a scholar uh paul benjamin blood was a scholar benjamin paul blood was a scholar so he was like a super sophisticated writing like super convoluted like crazy like almost like baroque style like where it's like really (laughs) descriptive and he's right. He's he was a philosopher, so he's writing philosophy, and he had some guy write to him where he was like just some hick somewhere, like some redneck. He's like, "Hey, dude, you know, like regular layman terms, like I don't, you know, I am a nobody. You know, I work in the fields. I'm an idiot. You know, I'm retarded, but I've been to the dentist and I know exactly what you're talking about." And mm-hmm. it was like here you see the two spectrums of like a super scholarly, smart philosopher guy crazy dude right and then like the regular layman person who works in the field has no education doesn't even like barely knows how to write and is like describing the same thing that the other dude is describing like at the same time and it's like i know what you're talking about i know exactly what you're getting at because i've experienced it which is crazy yeah and and you know and and then it kind of makes you think so let's take let's take that that trope and kind of expand on it like so let's say there's some super intellectual philosophical professor or whatever. He probably lives his life in that kind of mode of overanalyzing, hyperanalyzing, uh, kind of uh, extrapolating all of his experiences out, right? Like let's say he gets laid one night and he's like, oh, it was this kind of experience, like very Freudian perhaps, like, oh, I, I had images of like my mother. Freud or, wanted to fuck his mom, yeah. <laughs> yeah, whatever it is. But whereas like a... a a, a layman might have, you know, let's say he gets laid and he's like, man, it was great. Like I, I felt like a kid again, you know, like when I was banging this, 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 uh, country wench, you know, and it's like uh, on a deep level, the experience might be similar and the, the revelations might be the same, but how you interpret it or how you, uh, relay that information varies vastly. And so, uh, it's interesting. Yeah. And so if you, if you t- expand that out to like life, right. Everyone's kind of experiencing things their own way, but you know, there, there has to, it's almost as if like in everything, there's some unifying truth, but it's hard to explain or to describe or to uh, even articulate to yourself what, what it was, but it's like inherently, you That's know, a what gift it though, dude. Yeah, absolutely. Being able yeah. to convey ideas efficiently is a gift and it's a yeah, craft. I can't do it. I'm, I'm retarded, dude. You know? <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> so like, yeah, that's why, cause you know, and I, and that adds to the conspiracy of like, you know, we've been lied to this entire time. And I think that things were more magical back then. And if, you know, the alpha, the original alphabet was only like 17 or 19 letters long. And it was like, they've added all these symbols and glyphs into it to convolute what we can say. And when you have, spiritual experiences how like on dmt or even mushrooms or whatever it is we lack the language to be able to describe the experience and that goes Mm. with everything in life like even the you know it's like describe the Mm. the word yellow like the color yellow how would you describe that like how would you you know what i mean like how it's like answering a question with a question Right. It's like a blind person, like you're looking at a beautiful sunset and the blind guy's like, like, like he's your best friend. He's your homie. And and he's like, what does it look like? And you're like, well, it's blue and yellow and orange. And he's like, what is blue? Kind of like your kid, right? Asking like you explain what it is. And he's like, well, what is blue? It's like, well, it's the funniest shit because he'll do it in front. Like he'll do it in front of my wife with me. 
And he'll be like, oh, what's an airplane made out of? And I'm like, metal, right? And what's the road made out of? And I'm like, rocks. I don't know. Like, I want, I, I need to relate it to where he understands it without without him asking me another question. Because they're like, oh, oh, it's made out of asphalt. What's asphalt? And it's like, well, you know, and then you have to describe Rock with tar. <laughs> what's tar? Yeah, what's, what's tar? Oil that's like been processed. He's like, well, what's oil? It's like, it's... uh dinosaur and you're like well what's a dinosaur and you're like fuck dude <laughs> like yeah, yeah that's, dude that's how yeah. it is having a four-year-old you around you can apply that to perhaps spiritual experiences like it was like meeting god well well what's god well it's like this all-powerful entity that i experienced so it was like well what's all powerful and what, what what's an entity like w- was it a man was it a person was it a spirit well, what, what what are those things right mm-hmm. and you, you can I think on pretty if if we're taking this logic, you could apply that kind of thinking to anything, and then life just gets really confusing. <laughs> well, that's there's a reason why they call me the rabbit hole master because well, your name changes every time we do a show. Last time you were Reverend Juan. No, well, this one was given to me by a Freemason, so I'm gonna stick with this one because it's like it's Who, pretty, uh, paranoid American. Yeah, he's our resident Freemason of the he show. Is, Dude, okay, so he gave you rabbit hole master, he, so it's official. It's official. I, I have to Did take you, it. Are you on the lodge? No, I haven't gone to the lodge yet. I'm probably not gonna. Go. I, I don't feel that I should be a part of any group in particular because I'm a free right. agent. If you get what I mean, you know what I mean. Right. You, you could join the Shriners or the Freemasons. Like you kind of just yeah. float in between, right? Like a not a double agent, but a free agent. I well, like my that. my soul card is the Hierophant, so it's it's the man of what mysteries. Is that? What's the soul card? What? I don't know. I did. So I don't believe in astrology or like tarot, but dude, check this no. out. So, you know, cause I man, it's crazy. Cause I say, I don't believe in that shit, but then I'll tell you, I believe in magic. So I was <laughs> up the other two nights ago. <laughs> I was up two nights ago and I had, I had a birth chart reading done. Right. Cause I'm like, oh, I wonder what the fuck, you know, whatever. Like by a person or like an app. No, no, by a person, by like an astrologer. Right. right? So she, she did a reading for me. Mind you, she doesn't know who the fuck I am. Like, she doesn't know me. And she did this reading, right? It's like a video, personalized, whatever. And she starts saying things that are, like, so spot on. And I know, like, this is NLP type shit where it's like you're supposed to be generic enough to be specific. Like, that's what they do in religion. Like, oh, it's, like, so spe- it's so broad but then so specific at the same time. That's how they get you. And then she she, she, she doesn't know me, bro. Like, trust me, she doesn't know me. She's like, oh, and this might mean this and da-da-da and this and that. She's like pointing things out in my life that I am, I am like that and things that she couldn't have possibly known about me. She's saying it in this video from just my time and all this shit. So I'm like, okay, that's crazy. So then the other night I was on YouTube because mind you, I've been staying up like 3, 4 in the morning with the kid. And it was like, I think it was this morning or, the, or yesterday morning. It was like National Tarot Day. So like on the YouTube app, it had like this, I was like, oh, click here for a free tarot reading. I'm like, all right, whatever. I don't believe in this shit. So like it made me shuffle the cards on the phone. It was like a one card reading. And then like, it's like, oh, pick a card. And I'm like, I don't know. So I click a card and it's like the moon card. And like the moon card's like, you are uncertain about life. And I'm like, what the, literally when I was like, I don't know. I just, it's like, you are uncertain. I'm like, oh, okay, okay, whatever. So what, whatever. <laughs> So I was like, oh, do you want to pick a soul card? Which I don't know what the fuck any of this shit means. I'm like, all right, sure. I'll pick a soul card. Cool. So I pick a soul card and it's like this one card that's supposed to be free. And it's the Hierophant, which is the man of mysteries. Like it's represented by the number five. And uh, I don't know if you've seen like the Vitruvian man with like the five pointed star. Uh-huh, like that's yeah. what it means. Like that's the, so in Pythagorean thought, the number five is the man of mysteries. Like the you know uh, that it's representative of the pyramid like you know the four points and the one point in the center like you know the uh tetrahedron or whatever the fuck it's called tetrahedron uh so in pythagorean thought it represents that and i consider myself a man of mystery like learning about the esoteric and all this shit and then like awesome powers like man of mystery so the the pentaverse right penta five it's the same thing, the Man of Mysteries, and it's a it's a show about the Illuminati and all this shit. That's why I said, tell people keep. Oh, a, have you been watching that, the Pentaverit? I haven't I haven't watched it, but from the title, oh, I can tell already tell you, it's about it's a story. You know, I've seen the the trailer. It's about the Illuminati and all this shit, but it's like the Pentad, the number five, is the mm-hmm. Hierophant, like the you know the the Man of Mysteries. So, coincidentally enough, when she gave me my birth chart reading, she was like, "Oh, 
you have the birth chart of an alchemist. And I'm like, what the fuck does that even mean? Like, you know, she's like, well, you know, this house is in here. And that means like you're into like the occult and the esoteric and all this shit. And then like over here, you like the finer things in life. And like, you like art. Look at the, look at my fucking wall. Like, you know, like stupid shit like that. Like I, I pay for custom art all the time. I dress up as an alien. So like, I, you know what I mean? It's like these weird little things where it's like, okay, this is, this is too specific for it to be fake. Okay. But then at the same time, is it like some projection of your psyche and like a confirmation bias where you're making it come true? Right. Or did she like look you up on YouTube and saw that you had all this art and you dress up like an alien? No, but she like- was saying other things that she couldn't have known like at all. Like I don't post certain shit. Like I, she couldn't have known like, you know, mm-hmm. Oh, you might be, you know, susceptible or like you might get something, you know, later on in your life. And I'm like, well, I know what it is, but that's all these specific that you say that just from looking at my chart. Cause I don't talk to people about whatever it is. You know what I mean? Like I don't I, it just, it's too, it's too occulted for her to have known it. You know, mm. you're not going to find it on the fucking internet. You know what I mean? So it's like, that's fucking weird. That's why you need to run when she asks you what time you were born at. Cause she'll know your entire fucking life. If she reads your chart, you should send me her info and let me do one of those. Yeah. What was send, it like 50 bucks or something to do this? Uh, not for me. It was a hundred bucks, but I think it was well worth it. Cause she's awesome. And she like does like a personalized video and everything. She'll do it live for you. Like, you know, one-on-one, but I opted okay. for the video and I had like some other, I, I talked to a friend of mine about it and he did it. And he was like blown away too. So I don't, dude, I don't know. Like I don't believe in, and maybe I don't, I say I don't believe cause I don't understand it enough. Cause like yeah. when it comes to astrology and all this shit, it's like, Oh, the conjunction and the, the power rate and the Gretchel grade and the Gatorade and Pluto is and all this shit. Like, I don't know any of that shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. When people are like on Twitter, they're like Mercury's in retrograde. I'm like, I don't know what that means. I don't know. I don't even know what retrograde means. Like, can you explain that to me? And they're like, well, it's this. And I'm like, that doesn't make, I don't understand that. But so you, that's cool though, that you got that, that you got that reading. So, yeah. So when you look into that, like it makes sense that astrology would be real because whenever you look into like any like grimoire, like magical book or like talismanic magic or some shit, like any magical working, it always depends on the alignments of like the stars and the planets and all this shit. So like the, the ancients knew that this had some fucking sort of, significance so learning to read that system would only make sense you know what i mean it's like so it's a form of divination but i mean take that for whatever you want to fuck yeah, take it for, you know what i mean yeah i mean clearly there's there's some significance to it because the, our ancestors or the ancients or whatever i mean that's how they kind of based everything off of like they looked at the stars okay here's when we plant here's when we harvest here's when we do our rituals here's when we do this you know, and, and there, there, there's gotta be some significance to it, but I don't, I, I, I'm right there with you where like, I'm kind of skeptical, skeptical when it comes to like birth charts, right? Like, or even your monthly, uh, astrology reading or whatever. It's like, I know horoscope, you know, horoscope. Yeah. Yeah. It's like you, cause, because like you said, it's so general that it be, it can be, it can be specific. And it's like, I, uh, I'm not buying it. You know, it's like, like we started at the beginning, like, show me the dead kids. Otherwise it's like, I don't, I don't know if I want to, you know, get into that. Uh, because then there's the whole angle of like, well, this is magic. This is occultism you're practicing or whatever. Um, but so, so let me ask you this going in, in on your journey that you've been on. Do you feel more open to practicing magic to practicing these kind of techniques? Or are you still like the more you learn about it, are you more open to it or are you more closed off to it you're like i don't want anything to do with it yeah i'm more closed off to it like i'll learn about it but i won't do it because we have a filter right and uh, i love us levy or levi talks about it where uh, eventually the magician or the sorcerer or whoever is driven to madness because you have a filter so the way i can describe it is if you take your filter out of your vacuum it'll work right it'll work It'll, mm-hmm. it'll, it'll work for a little while until you suck something up that just fucks the motor up and it fries it. It's the same thing when it comes to us. I've heard people like tell me about them practicing the occult. They're like, yo, we just fit right in, dude. Like, and by we just fit right in, it's, you know, these altered states of consciousness where they're in other realms, which I 100% believe in. 
regardless of how woo woo that sounds, I believe that there are other physical states of reality. And yeah, Tracy Twyman talks about it where it's these hidden hyperspace kingdoms. And I don't know if you've gone down the rabbit hole of Google backrooms. Have you, have you gone down that, that rabbit hole? Google backrooms. Yeah. Google backrooms. So Google earth backrooms. And the only way I can describe it is so what Google earth backrooms or just Google backrooms, uh, Google or put Google. If you're going to look it up, look up Google earth backrooms. And I relate this to, you know, uh, Tracy Twyman, I don't know if you know who that is, uh, it's a cult researcher. And she talked about uh, these hidden hyperspace kingdoms where it was these these things out. So have you ever seen the Truman show, the movie? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, movie. you know, how at the end there's the that ladder that goes to that door and he's in, in a makeup world and then he goes to that door and that's the real world. Like, like that's the actual, that's the whole Gnostic mindset. Like we're trapped mm-hmm. in this false reality. So the hidden hyperspace kingdoms is these place where the elites go like physically like where the real like that's how i relate that to flat earth because out you know behind that, the ice and, wall yeah the extra land right extra yes. territory right? exactly right. so and then there is there is a you know jacob's ladder the the connection between this world and the outer world where you know these entities or elites on the other side are in contact with people within the system you know what I mean? So there, there's a direct line of contact there. Maybe that is, you know, when the people are talking to spirits. Bro, but me and you, right, everybody, whether you like it or not, we, because the new AI is the new divination. Like, the new AI is the, the modern day, uh, you know, Ouija board. Like, when you go on your on your YouTube and it recommends you all these fucking videos. Right. When it's right, coming right. up with things for you to watch. That's not you picking that. It's the algorithm picking that for you. And and you, oh, that sounds really interesting. Let me just click on that. You're already falling into that same thing because that's what divination is. They're asking mm-hmm. otherworldly things for suggestions or answers or something. And th- right. they, already, they already do it for us, you know? Like, <laughs> we're all <laughs> participating within the system without consciously which is the worst way because david ike says you know it's one thing to know that you're in a prison where you can feel and hold the bars versus when you're in a mental prison where you can't touch and feel the bars but you're still in a prison that's the Mm -hmm. same way that that they that they get us today how you said the class action lawsuit like they're selling your information data is a hot commodity nowadays and they're selling your information to who they don't know who they can't tell you who Okay, so when they say, oh, well, here's a fine for five billion bucks. You don't got to explain to us. You don't have to go under oath in front of the Senate and in front of the Supreme Court to, to just here, drink your water, you fucking lizard. And, and you know, yeah. just do another political theater. And, you yeah. know, we expect we're going to get answers. And here's the Johnny Depp case here. Just take this and, and hold on to that for a couple of days. Oh, and here's this other thing. And take that and hold on to. Oh, and the monkeys. Yeah, the gays are getting monkey pox. So here, hold this for a little bit. And let's see. While in the background, bro, they're doing fucked up shit like that right. we can't even imagine. You know what like I mean? Like all this stuff's going on right now, like with monkeypox, with the Johnny Depp trial. Meanwhile, you know, the World Economic Forum's meeting in Davos. Yeah. You know, and, right now, you and I are talking. And exactly. And so back to the, the Google backroom. So the, this idea that there is something outside the fabric of, of space and time that, you know, people are actually able to to interact with because you tell that to somebody they're like, Oh, shut the fuck up. Like you're just, you know, one of the hermetic principles is all is mine, but I just feel like there's something more to that. It's something like something that somebody can experience real time and like in a real world sense. Like, you know what I mean? If you go to Google, Google earth backrooms, there's certain areas within the Google earth. And they say that these are glitches and that there's people fucking, uh, you know, hacking the system or whatever. But I find mm-hmm. it so weird because, you know, you can dismiss shit like so easily. Like I think I, I saw one yesterday. It was uh, I want to say Andy from the Deep Share podcast posted it on Instagram and it was like off the oh, coast. The great of, deception. It was the great deception. Was it with with Matt? Maybe I, I yeah. can't remember. They all repost their shit, each other shit, which is fine. But with that me. shit right there, uh, bro. I related the, that to it was like with the, with off, off the island off of Australia. Yes. And, you click on like the street view and it's just like a circle of chairs in the room. Well, you saw so, that yeah, no. So yeah, I did see that video and I'd seen the Google backrooms before and 
I relate that because, you know, we're talking about DMT and all this shit. I've had on my podcast, uh, I forget which episode it is because it was so many, but my friend Luke Williamson, which I've done a fuckload of episodes with on my show, he's done ayahuasca a bunch of times in South America, Egypt, and he's gone around the world at these different megalithic sites. And he's done ayahuasca, like, I don't know how many times, probably like 12, 10, 15 times, whatever. And he said that one time he was, not, it wasn't ayahuasca, it was peyote, and they had to snort. Uh, I think it was, I forgot what drug. They had to snort through the fing- through a dried out finger of a dead monk. They had a, they were doing this ritual, right? Where they, whatever. Mm-hmm. And they had to snort this white powder. I think it was like, I, I don't know. If it was, I don't think it was DMT. It was something else. They had to snort it through the finger of a dead monk, bro. Like a hollowed out, dried out finger of a dead monk. And they snorted it. And he said that when he took that, it felt like when he snorted, like they had just, he felt like he got a fucking 12 gauge to the back of the fucking skull when he did it. And that when he went into this state of wherever the fuck he was, he remembers going into this room similar to what you saw in that video where it was a bunch of dudes in robes. There's a black and white checkered floor, a bunch of dudes in robes, and he was at this altar. And he said when he looked at them, they looked up at him and they acknowledged him like, holy shit, like, who the, how the fuck this guy get in here? And he remembers seeing one of his old shaman uh, ayahuasqueros, which is a person who administers the ayahuasca in the Brazilian mm-hmm. rainforest. And mm-hmm. he remembers that same ayahuasquero, which is like a witch doctor or whatever you want to call it, like a shaman. shaman. Yeah, yeah. Telling him about these other places that you either go when you pass on or you're able to go into an altered state of like consciousness. Tap into, yeah. Tap into. And you have Helena Blavatsky talking about Ascended Masters. You have Manly P. Hall. You know, you have Agartha. You have Shambhala. You have Atlantis. Like, all these fucking ideas of, uh, you know, these Ascended Masters outside of the space and time, you know, like Cthulhu-esque type things. Mm-hmm. I 100% believe in that shit, bro. I think that... You're yeah. a- that's how all the ancient civilizations went missing, bro. They were able to tap into something to whether it was frequency vibrations or something. And they were able to leave as a people. You well, know? it's like the Mayans, right? They kind of just vanished. Exactly. Without- Not only them, but a bunch of different people. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like there's a, been a bunch of different people. And I Holy think, so- Oh my God, keep going. I'm sorry. And I'm able- <laughs> so I, and I added to, so, cause you know, sometimes you'll see like pieces of information, bro, where you're like, fuck, I knew that, but I didn't connect that other thing with it. And like seeing like the great deception post that, and then I did a podcast with SB Alger, which is connected to Tracy, which his show, you know, like four years ago made me start mine. And like he, you know, his show inspired me to start really looking into like esoteric shit with like his work with Tracy and all this shit. So we were riffing off each other on this podcast we did yesterday and we were just throwing ideas out. And I did a, a, a podcast with Jared Murphy. He wrote the book. It's, it's not aliens worse. It's us discovering our lost history. He like threw some shit at me that like blew my fucking mind. I was like, what in the fucking world did you just say to me? So in Brazil, and in different parts of the world, because we know that these ancient megalithic structures, they look like circuit boards. So mm-hmm. I think that these people were they're like finding more too, like in the rainforest. Yeah. Like so the stuff, they're finding more. They were, I think that they were building like custom build computers, like PC builds of back then. And there's mm-hmm. this thing called uh, Terra Preta, which is Brazilian for dark sand or black sand. And it's this bioengineered soil. That is found in the Brazilian rainforest is found in, uh, near these ancient megalithic sites in places where the civilizations weren't supposed to have met. Do you find this soil sometimes up to 20 feet thick? And this soil is like conductive. It, it things grow crazy. It's like super nutrient. It's a hundred percent man-made. Now they've always told you that the rainforest, nobody can live there. It's too wet. Nobody can grow anything and they're knocking it down. And as they're knocking it down, they're find they're finding lost ancient ruins mm-hmm. and cities. And it's like, wait a minute, you just said that people couldn't live here, but why the fuck is there settlements in in the rainforest? Right, right. So he said, right, because again we're riffing off each other, and I go, 
what does the RH or the haplogene X have to do with this, which is these ancient bloodlines? And mm -hmm. the, the haplogene X is these uh, these people, these indigenous people of back then, they were more susceptible to the paranormal. So this is how you get the skinwalker, the wendigo, the, the you know, Bigfoot, you know, these things that we see. It's like, wait a minute, the boogeyman, you know, Slenderman, like these egregores, which are real right to people like if people who experience this, this is real to them you know that that abduction was real to him i can't yeah. take that away he's like i think therefore i am i can't take that experience away from you so he's like well the thing is that depending on which geographical part of the world you're in uh you know they say it's really good to walk barefoot in places you know like connect yourself with the sand so certain people are more conductive because of their roots, because of their bloodline to these certain areas. Now, uh, when somebody in the States, you know, gets like a, like a paranormal experience or like a synchronicity or a magical experience near some of this, it's, you know, the system isn't backwards compatible. He would, you know, if his family is from the Brazilian rainforest in order for him to get that full effect, he'd have to go to the rainforest. But since we've all migrated different places, you know, we're only getting a little zap, you know, of, of right. the system and not a hundred percent because we don't understand what the fucking pyramids were real for. We don't know the, 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 you know, the Mayan calendar ended in 20, what, what did it mean? It ended in 2012. Well, they were copying the Aztecs and all these other guys. So when did their, when did their calendar end? Well, 2029. It's like, what happens in 2029? Well, there's oh, a fucking, shit. there's an, there's an, yeah, there's an asteroid called the Pophis, which is the serpent God of fucking darkness and destruction. And there's an asteroid named Apophis that's coming down to Earth in 2028 or 2029 that's supposedly going to hit the Earth. So and let me look that up just to make sure I'm not talking on my fucking ass. Ap I'm pretty sure it's Apophis. At, yeah, asteroid 2029. Holy shit, dude. You, I mean, there's so much to unpack there. <laughs> so here you go. So 99942 Apophis is a near-Earth asteroid and potentially hazard hazardous asteroid with a diameter of 370 meters that caused a brief period of concern in December 2004 when initial observation indicated a probability of 2.7% that it would hit the Earth on April 13, 2029. That's weird because tax day is April 15th. And <laughs> that's also like a midsummer, like fucking pagan holiday. And we know that this is what they do because they relate fucking these ancient pagan holidays. And they, you know, that's what Christmas is. And that, you know, so you have Saturnalia and you have all this shit. So again, uh, is it a coincidence? Maybe, dude. But when you start connecting these dots, it's like, mm, I don't know. Right. And, and and I say this all the time when it comes to topics like this, you know, and our, our way of thinking, all we, all you and I are doing is, is finding patterns in events or in circumstances or in information. We're not, it, it's a natural human tendency to look for patterns, right? And so when we're when when they say we're quote unquote connecting dots that shouldn't be connected or whatever, all we're doing is identifying the patterns that have been laid out before us, and we kind of have an intuitive uh, sense to connect these dots and find these patterns and look for the hidden information or whatever. Because if something's hidden, if you can d distinguish the pattern or the code or the uh, you know the sequence of something, you can you can figure it out. And I like what you said about that that black sand, right? That super nutrient rich soil that was man made. Well, there's theories now that the 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 rainforest isn't necessarily natural. It was really just. Uh, oh kind yeah, of I didn't finish. So he he touched on that. It was a fucking botanical garden that was went, went haywire. Geoengineered, yeah, yeah exactly, a hundred percent. And that was the part that blew my fucking mind because. I'm talking to this guy who's been on fucking coast to coast and all these crazy fucking shows. And I'm like, what the fuck did you just say to me? I was like, did you just say that the entire rainforest was man-made? Cause dude, I don't know if you know how, cause my wife is Brazilian. So mm -hmm. I don't know if you understand. Nice. Um, yeah. Nice. <laughs> if you don't understand how big Brazil is. Brazil is fucking huge. Okay. It's huge. It's bigger huge. Than yeah. A hundred percent bigger than tech. It's huge. And people don't don't grasp how big it is, and it's like, oh, the Brazilian rainforest, is like it's fucking ginormous, bro. It's like it's fucking huge. So to think that the rainforest is a hundred percent man made, 
is one of the wildest fucking things in the world. Like, what are you even fucking saying, dog? Like, you know what I mean? Like, and again, he's talking about how just, you know, how would they talk about in Tartaria or Atlantis or any of these fucking things where it's like, you know, uh, there was this ancient race of people. He had the Paracas skull, which is people of the long, the elongated skulls where Mm -hmm. they could have been a, a race of people like a, like a, you know, a species of people that were highly advanced, more in tune with nature, which I think that's what it was, dude. Because back then, if you really think about it, there was no light pollution. They were looking up into the sky and going, wow, that's wild up there. Like you could see all the constellations and all the galaxies and all this shit. And like now they've suppressed that with all the light pollution and all the bullshit. You got to go, you got to drive miles and miles and miles to really get a dark sky. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, so uh, let's see here. I'm trying to oh find God. shit, dude. <laughs> it was either the, either the Mayans copied the Incas or the, or they copied the Aztecs. And one of their calendars ended in like 2028 or 2020. I'm trying to find the, the, so I can back it up with, with, you know, the, the research. Cause I've done this forever ago, but you can look up Apophis, which is the real asteroid. And Apophis, A-P-O-F-P-H-U-S. A-P-O. P H I S Apophis. And you can look up the symbolism behind that. Cause I'm real big on symbolism. So if you look up Apophis, Egyptian God, you have like the serpent, right? The, the God of evil, chaos, darkness, and destruction. And it's, it's the, you know, it was a former sun God who, you know, was fighting with raw. It was the serpent that raw was fighting with. Cause you know, the Egyptians thought that when the sun went down, it was the God fighting in the underworld. And that was the, what the moon symbolized. And every, every day he would come back up. And that's what they thought back then that he was fighting in the underworld when the fucking moon came out every day. <laughs> yeah. I remember that, that from, uh, I was talking about this last night on a podcast from that, uh, zeitgeist movie. Do you remember that documentary forever ago? Yeah. Dude, that was like a, a big a big moment, you know, for for me at least, and I think for a lot of people. But, but yeah, the, it's 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 crazy to think that uh, people of of the past, you know, without this information or this technology, they just kind of saw things and, and came up with explanations, and uh, you know, it, it's insane. But as far as the rainforest goes, dude, I'd love to do a deep dive on that sometime because. Uh, this is information that, that's new to me that I'm hearing in regards to, I think I heard it on Joe Rogan or something like the rainforest was man-made and it's like, what? what yeah. When you, when you think about it, you know, it's, it's fucking wild. You know what I mean? When you, when you connect this, like, wait a minute, what did it, what bro? Like how, cause we've been taught like completely different. And now, you know, that's the whole part of the conspiracy realm where it's like, you know, the, the truth is stranger than fiction. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's supposed to sound uh, absurd cause it is, you know? Mm-hmm. And like, it's like, Oh, well, you know, it's easy to dismiss it. Like, Oh, that's, that's bullshit. Dude. You, know, you know what I right. mean? Right. And it's like, then you, then you, you know, following that conspiracy mind, it's like, well, why are they trying to destroy it then? Or, or why is it getting cut down at such a high pace or what are they trying to hide in it or, or what's actually there that we're not seeing, you know? And it, it's, I mean, fuck, dude. I, I can't. I can't imagine. I can't imagine. Yeah, no, neither can I, dude. And I mean, when he was telling me this stuff, I was like, "What in the fuck?" Because I mean, I watched a bunch of his lectures, and uh, the dude's super who cool. Is this, who's this guy? Jared Murphy. He's gonna be episode ninety-five on my show. Uh, you can look him up, Jared Murphy, and it's uh, it's not aliens. Worse, it's us. It's a book, and uh, you can look him up on YouTube and shit. So he pretty much gets on that, like this whole thing of the megalithic structures and how these structures are all, uh, they work off cymatics and they're like on a molecular level, like they, uh, they're able to shift, you know, when fucking earthquakes and everything comes, but we don't know that because they won't dig, you know what I mean? They don't look at these structures from, you know, it's just like, Oh, well, you know, here is the oldest statue we found near the site. So it must be X civilizations. You know what I mean? Do you think that just based on the the information that you've you've gathered so far, do you think it's connected with with the whole Tartaria thing? So I get a, I get a lot of shit because I'm not a flat earther, and I get a lot of shit when I'll go on like you know Illuminati oh. confirmed or you know either one of these bigger shows where I, I 
don't bash on flat earth because I respect everybody's beliefs, but I feel me. This is me personally speaking. And I'm sure you've gotten shit about the flat earth too because you've come out and talked about it. But I feel that tar- there's more evidence for Tartaria than there is a flat earth. Because like the I, flat earth community I, is all about, oh, the truth, truth, truth. It's like, well, it's coming from a biased point of view because everything is truth to you except for that one thing. Well, that's my truth. You know what I mean? So what's right, that's my truth. Yeah, are you discrediting fine. my truth? Oh no, you're just misguided. But why? You know what I mean? It's like we we let's Kyle, let's agree. The fucking NASA government, all the lizards are corrupt. A hundred fucking percent. I can agree with you yes. on that. One hundred percent. I agree. They're lying to us about one hundred percent. Kyle, but how does it change? What does the shape of the world change in your fucking life? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. fucking lutely nothing. And that's what normies will say too. Like I talked to my my former co-host about flat earth and he's like, it doesn't matter. It doesn't. Like that's a good point of view for someone who's not into this or has any stake in it. You know, that's kind of how they see it. It's like, I don't care either way. It doesn't change anything. So I feel that Tartaria, there's actual tangible proof. Like these buildings, they were up. I can see the pictures of the buildings. I can see the 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 ruins of these, you know, what's arguably more advanced the weathering on the sphinx okay they're maybe lying to us about the history we know joseph scaliger is was a fucking jesuit priest a monk and he fucking made up the a a d b c system that we know today so who's to say that our timeline isn't fucked up anatoly fomenko if you look into his work you know on the fucked up timeline where science is, is is you know history is has been shifted you know there was no dark ages there was none of that if you want to go down that rabbit hole but to me the whole flat earth thing is all it would take, and it's not impossible because anything is possible, or maybe it is impossible. Just get on a get on a fucking ship and go into the fucking what? What if you know they got one of these flat? Bro, this is the craziest shit. Because what if they got one of these flat earthers, bro? And they put him on some ship and they launch him to outer space and they went onto the fucking space station. It's like, hey, look down, motherfucker. Like, where are you right now? You know, he's like, you were just launched into space, and that's that. And like you're in outer space, look down. It's round, motherfucker. Like the, you know, it's a ball. What what are they gonna say? With, you know what I mean? Like, right? right. It's not well, impossible. And I, and I think you and I both know their arguments. It's like, well, one guy did try to do it, but he blew up halfway up. Or, uh, you know, we can never afford to go to space, or they never let any of us go to go they to can't space. Can't afford to go to space, bro. You know how much money NASA has that they, you know. But again, it. You see how it is, bro. Like, even within religion there's denominations within conspiracy there's denominations within life yeah. there's denominations within the world there's denominations people are following borders that are imaginary that the fucking lizards put into place and everybody just adheres to them just because you know they, mm-hmm. animals don't give a shit about borders animals no. don't give a fuck about your borders why because they're imaginary but if people that's that mental prison and they keep us fighting with each other even within the conspir- conspiracy community because i've had fucking messages of oh you fucking idiot i'm like dude I've had Mark Sargent and David Weiss and Moral Bob on my fucking show, and I'm still not convinced, okay? Mm-hmm. I'm not convinced that the earth is fucking flat. You know what I mean? I don't think I'll ever find enough evidence for me to convince me otherwise. Like, you know what I mean? Right. I, I'd rather believe in Tartaria because I can see these ancient ruins and these weird fucking buildings out of place. You know what I mean? These ancient, these old maps, the pre-1600 maps with Tartaria real big versus... What your dude like your fucking research in your basement that you well, and, <laughs> and, and kind of how I look at it is like it's like not the, the two aren't mutually exclusive, right? No, 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 no. Yeah, well, yeah, you can believe in Tartaria and not believe in flat Earth, absolutely, yeah. Or you can believe in both. Or you can believe, in, yeah, you can believe in both. Well, and it's like so you brought up the maps of Tartaria, like old maps. Well, there's a big argument in the flat Earth is like you know there's maps from like the 1500s of uh, with with Antarctica, with f- trees and forests and green and stuff, it's like, okay, that doesn't mean that it's an ice wall or whatever. It's like there, there maybe the shit has changed, or maybe it has always been that way. It doesn't mean that, uh, you know, the the two theories are are exclusive. Uh, it's, uh, I think there's evidence in in both because at the core of of both of those arguments, it's like we don't know what we don't know. You know, we're being <laughs> lied to about one thing or the other. Um, and I think you can find some common ground in both of those, but I agree with you. I'm not convinced 
on either way. Uh, but I, I certainly agree with you in the, on the point that there's something about our past that we don't understand. There's some fuckery afoot. That's what we can agree on. A hundred percent. And, uh, you know, look at like the Hopi, the Hopi Indians, you know, they are huge on the hollow earth. Like that's kind of where the most of the, the, insect the modern, people like, yeah, the, the ant people who like bring them down when there's a major cataclysm happening or whatever, there's some validity to that, right? I mean, the, the ancients, uh, you know, the, the oral history of these tribes is, is, uh, is incredible. And we, we have to take something from that. You know what I mean? So I, I don't know, man, I, I think it can go either way, but I, I'm right there with you. There, there's definitely more evidence for one than the other. Oh yeah. I mean, and dude, I've gotten so many fucking comments for that. Like, <laughs> But it's, um, I couldn't get past the bashing of the flat earth, but then you're going to endorse hollow earth, dude. Like, shut the fuck. Like, you know, like, be quiet. You know what I mean? Like, I'm going to believe what I want to. Hey, and hey, dude, I reserve the right to change my mind. Like, if they were to launch me into space, you know, Daddy Elon Musk was was able to give everybody a spaceship, and we were able to go, and it was like a fucking Frisbee. Hey, I'll eat my words. You know what I mean? Like, or we get to the firmament, and we just bounce right back down, and we didn't see the curve. Whatever, dude. Like, you know, like. That's cool. Yeah, exactly. And I think that that same principle can be applied to anything, right? But I hate Whether, the hostility. You know what I mean? Like that's the only thing that gets me. Like the, I don't. I'm sure you've noticed it, but there's been a lot of fucking hostilities in the community, and I I've been calling it out. Not anyone in particular or taking sides or whatever, but it's like, hey guys, we need to chill out. You know what I mean? Because we're this is exactly what they want. They want us the exactly. the lizard or whatever. They want us to be fighting with each other. Want us to be arguing and disagreeing it's like if we all directed our energy at the things that we could really uh make a difference on or change or bring attention to that's what they don't want you know what i mean we we could highlight the the child sex trafficking we could highlight the lies from nasa we could highlight the corruption in our government but instead we're arguing about flat earth and tartaria you know what i mean and i don't know if you listened to it a few weeks ago i did an episode uh called uh, uh conspiracy thirst, trap. thirst traps and it's like not that they're not valid theories or valid topics to discuss, but for the most part, all they do is cause division. Yeah, no, that, you know? I'm a, that's why I brought that up on this episode because I listened to that yeah. episode and I was like, a hundred percent, bro. You know what I mean? Like just emotional, <laughs> damn it. <laughs> <laughs> not that they're not fun, but it's like, okay, what what can we actually make a difference on? So. Well, hey, Juan, I don't want to keep you too long. I know you got babies to attend to and, uh, and a wife, uh, a hot br- Brazilian wife, I, pr- I can only imagine, to make love to and perhaps make another baby. Um, so, uh, Juan, I'm, I'm going to let you go. But, uh, dude, thanks for, for making this show happen. I, I Feel free to put it out on your end. I'll put it out on my end. But it was great to chat it up with you, dude. I miss you. I miss you too, bro. Like, we're, I'm, Dude, I'm here. I haven't gone anywhere, you fuck. I told you you can just hit me up. You were you were MIA for like six weeks, right? You were out of town and stuff. Like I saw your comments. You're like, I, I'm my studio. I'm not in my studio. I don't know what to do. Yeah, well, so. I, I was still making it happen, but like it, it just it, it honestly like it did make a difference in my content because I'm I'm a creature of habit and just being out of my. I think being too close to. I think it's like the thirtieth parallel or some shit, bro. Oh god, being okay. near that, and then I had forgotten my fucking crystals and my fucking pendants and all this shit. So I was like, Oh, dude, how do you operate? How do you operate? No, but I'm serious, dude. For like five weeks, I was like, just like off my game. Like I was doing research. Like it was just like cloudy. And then like, here I am like back in my, my feng shui is back. And oh dude. Yeah. You got Nicholas cage backing you up. You got, you got the, the Holy ghost of, of the cage, uh, you know, in, in, in the room with you. So, um, but yeah, you absolutely killed it tonight, dude. I, I, I took a bunch of notes, things I got to look into some people I got to look up. Um, but yeah, dude, let's, let's do it again sometime. Don't be a stranger and I'll, I'll do my best not to be a stranger as well. So yeah, for sure, homie. Yeah. I'll put it out on my feet too. Uh, cool. so yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that after here, but yeah, dude, for sure. I always enjoy talking to you, man. I, I, I like having the conversations where it's not always conspiracy. I like to talk about real life shit. Sometimes you just want to take a break from all the fucking bullshit yeah. and just talk life. You know what I mean? Like just have a regular conversation. Like I'll have people hit me up like, Oh, let's do an episode on this. I go, why can't we just fucking talk, bro? Yeah. The, <laughs> I have people ask me like, what's the, when someone asked me the other day, what's the structure of your show? And I was like, structure, what are you talking about? Like, I was just going to talk to you. I'm like, Oh, okay. That works. It's like, I, and I find that when I, when I try to structure things like with, pre 
yeah. determine topics or questions, it just goes downhill and it feels very ungenuine. So, um, but I guess uh, if you, for my listeners, if you want to plug your shit, go ahead. At the one on one podcast on all social media platforms, anywhere you get your podcast, rockfin.com slash the one on one podcast, patreon.com slash the one on one. I just got a new Patreon too, a new patron just now. So, and I, and I will say for anyone who's, who's interested, the, the stickers for the Patreon are bomb. I have them all over my sticker, my table here. I've got Alex Jones with tits, like literally like right in front of me. I stare at that all the time when I'm looking at shit. I've got you in an alien hat right next to it. Uh, I, literally, I, I think a, a good like, you know, 8%, 10, 12% of, of the stickers on my table here. It's a big table are all are, are all your stickers so oh, yeah bro. i appreciate that get, get some good good shit out of that and then the, the patreon is great illuminati confirmed also a great show fun fun to be a part of and uh you know you, you're absolutely killing it and then i guess for uh, for your listeners if when you put this out um kyle with the big dumb podcast on all platforms uh you can search the big dumb podcast and i'll i'll show up and uh yeah just thanks juan for uh having a great conversation dude it's it's nice to just Kind of like you said, just chat. It looks it up. like you needed it, bro. Like you, you yeah, held, it yeah. looked like you were holding some shit in. So I just let you I do your rough, thing. I had a rough day today, dude. I had a rough day today, so it was great to do <laughs> do a little podcast. I was gonna actually have another podcast scheduled after this, but thank God it got canceled. I'm ready for bed. So yeah, dude. Uh, well, everybody, thank you so much. Have a wonderful night, and we'll catch you on the flip side. Hail Satan. <laughs>